Before we learn how to quantify and calculate measurement uncertainties, we're going to take a brief look at how to properly present measurements and their uncertainties. To do this, we're going to look at a rather absurd but hopefully illustrative example. This rather absurd example that we're going to use is akin to a gambling scenario. Imagine that you want to purchase the latest and greatest newest technological widget that retails for $250. Through a little bit of research on the internet, you find that there are a couple of these companies that are going to offer sort of a gambling arrangement which may allow you to purchase your new gadget at a lower cost. The scheme works like this. On the website, you enter your credit card information. Once that they determine that it's a valid credit card, you can opt to purchase the item. However, there is a catch. They don't tell you the cost of the item that they're going to charge you. Instead, by purchasing from them, you agree to a random pricing structure, wherein they're going to give you a price that has some average value, but could be more or less than the value that's stated. And here's where the gambling piece comes in. You could get a much better deal or a much worse deal than you had bargained for. Here we have listed five different companies and their average product cost for the widget that you want to buy. So the question that I have for you is which company is going to offer the most stable pricing for the product? Based on the average product cost information that we have, we don't have enough information to tell us about which company offers the most stable pricing. All we know is that each company is going to offer the product at an average of $200, but we have no understanding of what the variability about those $200 are. In addition to the mean value, we need to know the uncertainty about that mean value. Here we have listed for each of the five companies the mean price of $200, and then we have this variability plus or minus some additional value about the mean. At this point, it's important to note that there are two ways that variability can be expressed. One way is that it can be expressed using absolute uncertainty, which is in the same units as the mean value. The second way that uncertainty can be expressed is relative to the mean value. So for company B, they're expressing the relative uncertainty in a percentage, and that is a percentage of this mean value. So to put that in terms of absolute uncertainty, we take the 16.5% and multiply it by $200 to tell us that the relative, that the relative uncertainty is akin to an absolute uncertainty of $33. Based on this new uncertainty information, we may be inclined to say that company A provides the most stable pricing because the variability is only $20, plus or minus $20, whereas company E has a variability of about $50. Unfortunately, we still do not have enough information because the uncertainty alone does not tell the whole story. In addition to these uncertainty values, we also need to know the likelihood with which that uncertainty occurs. Therefore, to have all the information that we need in a statistical sense to compare the pricing and the uncertainty, we need to include this thing called a confidence interval. The confidence interval tells us the percentage of time for which the uncertainty that is stated is going to be true. In this example, company A is going to offer the product at a cost of $200 plus or minus $20, but that plus or minus $20 is going to be valid only about 70% of the time. Company E, on the other hand, is stating their price variability with 99% confidence. This indicates that 99% of the time, the product cost to the consumer is going to be somewhere between $150 and $250. So again, based on this information, which company offers the most stable pricing for this product? As it turns out, all of these companies statistically offer about the same pricing structure. 
even though the variability in the pricing for company A is smaller than that of company E, company A is stating the uncertainty with lower confidence than company E. So the big takeaway from all of this is that when we are stating measurements or and including uncertainties in those measurements, we need three critical pieces of information. First of all, of course, we need the mean value. We need some deviation value. And in addition to that, it's not complete unless we also state the confidence for which that deviation is true. In this module, we are going to discuss how to properly calculate the uncertainty interval as well as the confidence associated with that uncertainty interval.